In level 16 of hell, we battle through the serpentine azure drakes and see what can only be described as an unholy display. Human bodies spiked on spears in various contorted states, surrounded by a single staff on a rack, and realize this must be the staff of the betrayer, Lazarus himself. Killing a final stealth drake that tries in vain to protect the artifact, we portal back to town, staff in hand, and race to the town elder, Deckard Kane, hoping he can help unlock its secrets and turn the tide of war. It's then he finally reveals his true nature, confiding, This does not bode well, for it confirms my darkest fears. While I did not allow myself to believe the ancient legends, I cannot deny them now. Perhaps the time has come to reveal who I am. My true name is Deckard Cain, the Elder, and I am the last descendant of an ancient brotherhood that was dedicated to safeguarding the secrets of a timeless evil, an evil that quite obviously has now been released. The Archbishop Lazarus, once King Leoric's most trusted advisor, led a party of simple townsfolk into the labyrinth to find the king's missing son, Albrecht. Quite some time passed before they returned, and only a few of them escaped with their lives. Curse me for a fool! I should have suspected his veiled treachery then. It must have been Lazarus himself who kidnapped Albrecht and has since hidden him within the labyrinth. I do not understand why the Archbishop turned to the darkness or what his interest is in the child, unless he means to sacrifice him to his dark masters. That must be what he has planned. The survivors of his rescue party say that Lazarus was last seen running into the deepest bowels of the labyrinth. You must hurry and save the prince from the sacrificial blade of this demented fiend. Utterly shocked by the revelation, we resolve to save our brother Albrecht from Lazarus' sacrificial blade before it's too late. We turn then and ask Griswold about Lazarus' last known location, and he shares. Ah, I was there when Lazarus led us into the labyrinth. He spoke of holy retribution, but when we started fighting those hellspawn, he did not so much as lift his mace against them. He just ran deeper into the dim, endless chambers that were filled with the servants of darkness. So, he's deep inside some chambers we are yet to discover. We know that Wirt the peg-legged boy was himself dragged from the labyrinth thanks to the bravery of Griswold and some other townsfolk, and ask him if he saw anything, and he says, Yes, the righteous Lazarus, who is so effective against those monsters down there, and didn't help save my leg, did it? Look, I'll give you a free piece of advice. Ask Farnham, he was there. We pity Wirt and his lost leg, and also didn't want Farnham to have to relive the horrors of what Lazarus put him through, especially as our last conversation went so poorly. Griswold? Good old Griswold. I love him like a brother. We fought together, you know, back when we... Lazarus, Lazarus, Lazarus! But we must save our brother and press him to which he fitfully blathers. They stab, then bite, then they're all around you. Liar, liar! They're all dead, dead! Do you hear me? They just keep falling and falling. The blood spilling out all over the floor. All oh, his fault. <laughs> we then rest a hand on poor Farnham's shoulder and console him, heading next to the healer Pepin about the fallen archbishop who recalls. I was shocked when I heard of what the townspeople were planning to do that night. I thought that of all people, Lazarus would have had more sense than that. He was an archbishop and always seemed to care so much for the townsfolk of Tristram. So many were injured, I could not save them all. Perhaps Lazarus did once care, 
but that time has passed. It's then we see Ogden, who saunters over, hearing our conversation, and shares. Lazarus was the archbishop who led many of the townspeople into the labyrinth. I lost many good friends that day, and Lazarus never returned. I suppose he was killed along with most of the others. If you would do me a favor, good master, please do not talk to Farnham about that day. Damn, we're a little bit late on that one. We turn to see Jillian the barmaid, who is now loitering out front of the Tavern of the Rising Sun. She seems restless, and upon our approach, she remembers. I remember Lazarus as being a very kind and giving man. He spoke at my mother's funeral, and was supportive of my grandmother and myself in a very troubled time. I pray every night that somehow he is still alive and safe. It seems Lazarus may have been one of the first to be corrupted by the Lord of Terror. We then seek out the resident demonologist Adria the Witch by her hut, and she confirms our suspicions. I did not know this Lazarus of whom you speak, but I do sense a great conflict within his being. He poses a great danger and will stop at nothing to serve the powers of darkness which have claimed him as theirs. Although, on some level, we pity Lazarus, we cannot, however, forgive his transgressions if he's harmed our younger sibling. And so, cursing his name under our breath, we head back down to hell once more. A stone's throw from Lazarus' staff stand were assaulted by a gaggle of azure drakes, accompanied by their fanatic variants, who are greatly empowered by the darkness of hell. We then realize that Diablo has sent some of his strongest forces to guard a crimson portal beside a sign of the Lord of Terror's power, a great pentagram on the ground, no doubt sending his minions into a frenzy. Guarding the portal is a score of balrogs and drakes and other enemies enemies that force us to dive through the gateway to the unknown realm beyond. We cross through the portal and into a room that is awash with a red hue as fire burns, yet seems to be oddly familiar, as if part of the cathedral next to town and not a part of hell itself. We leave the room and a hit with a red blood star from a winged hellspawn. We chase her down, but are immediately bombarded with more blood magic from her sisters caged in an eastern room. <laughs> Heading northwest instead, we see another room full of succubi that parallels the eastern counterpart. Following the red missiles down the hall, we see on the wall statues of the fallen King Leoric, confirming this is no longer hell, but some form of old area of worship attached to the cathedral. Stalking the hellspawn into the southern room, we are ambushed by more succubi and unholy super unique mages known as advocates. Flying fireballs and flash spells hit us when we dare to breach the gap and encounter them toe to toe as they teleport to and fro. Not after defeating the mages, we see a vile tome above a pentagram and read it, but are immediately transported to the northwestern room full of succubi. Contending with the lusty demons, we're left to rinse repeat on the other side of the building, nearly swarmed by the torrents of blood magic and evil harpies trying to fell us before we can make our way to the accursed archbishop. <sighs> <sighs> Exhausted from hacking through droves of fiends, we move to exit the building the way we came, but are instead transported into the heart of the lair of the lecherous Lazarus himself and realize this is his seat of power. Abandon your foolish quest. All that awaits you is the wrath of my master. You are too late to save the child. Now you will join him. Thoroughly taunted and nearly torn asunder from torrents of magics engulfing us from all sides, we retreat to the eastern room. With no time to check the identity of the dead sacrificed boy on his altar, we believe we're too late and cast a town portal to escape, but realize this may be our only chance to contend with the cowardly Lazarus and make him pay 
Instead of fleeing, we turn heel and dart back and forth, hacking the legs from under the succubi bit by bit, evening the playing field. Lazarus, sensing our plan, blocks our path with multiple firewalls, the blaze rising like the fires of hell itself. The Archbishop then attempts to pin us in the western room where we take shelter, but we surprise him with a scroll of frozen orb that throws him off balance and allows us to make a last minute escape. Once again, we single out the Scarlet Witches and take out an errant councilman in our stride. The succubi then scatter, and we hunt the black and white pigmented Black Jade, who is lightning and arcane enchanted, and cunningly she leads us right back into the fray, lightning spewing from her hide whenever we manage to land a blow, however she dies in a heap in front of her kin. We then turn our attention to her sister, Red Vex now fearful of suffering the same fate, and she attempts to cower near the altar with the dead boy sacrificed atop it. Regardless, she falls next in front of the gothic artwork. Destroying the last of the Hellspawn sisters, we begin our hunt for the fallen priest and scream his name. Lazarus! Bastard! Sensing his presence, we become further enraged and declare, Time to die. We round the corner and see Lazarus by the town portal. He vanishes momentarily and we drive our blade into his abdomen, promising. Your business ends here, betrayer. <sighs> Lazarus, now ash, spills to the floor. He drops some paltry items on his body. We then remember, more importantly, his sacrifice and race back to the altar thanking the heavens to see it indeed was not our brother, Albrecht. Nonetheless, another poor soul sacrificed to the Lord of Terror himself. We pause to think, with Lazarus dead, we are one step closer to ending this madness. And then we notice a curiosity, a chest that the ex-archbishop seemed to be guarding, and inside is a map to the stars? We stash the map in our inventory, heading back to the newly identified Herodric scholar Deckard Cain, as it's no doubt a vital clue on our reckoning with Diablo himself.